Hey there, vinyl community. The powers that be, which is you guys, have taken it upon yourselves to bestow upon to me 10,000 subs, which I'm incredibly grateful and humbled by. Um, I remember making a 5,000 sub video just a little over a year ago, so um, I'm really excited and, and surprised by how much the channel has grown, but um, I think every creator that reaches a milestone is surprised that people actually want to watch what they do. So I'm, I'm so I'm so proud of the kind of community we built here and just how the, the general vinyl and audio community on YouTube has um, evolved and grown over the past couple of years, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. So to show my appreciation to my community and other creators on this platform, I, uh, I wanted to do a contest video, and a lot of you probably know how this works, but some of you may not, so I'll try to explain it briefly. Uh, I'm going to ask a couple uh, questions that give you the opportunity to show off some parts of your record collection or you know, answer uh, in a creative way. And if you make a response video um, to my video answering these questions and showing off some records and things like that, then you will be entered to win some prizes. If you would like to make a response video, um, Please, uh, I, I think I'm going to have this contest go for one month, so uh, this video is probably going to go up tomorrow, September 7th, so you'll have until October 7th to make a video and upload it to YouTube. When you upload it, please include in the title, uh, Poetry on Plastic, uh, 10,000 subscriber contest, and please at me, so um, you can tag me in your video titles with the at sign, so at Poetry on Plastic, that will tag me, YouTube will send me a notification, let you, let you know I've been tagged in a video. Um, it will make just everything really, really easy. But also, when you do that, please also comment on this video. Uh, in case I miss the tag, I can also look at the comments and go and find your video. So if you do those things, I will be able to find your video entry and add it to the playlist so that when we do the raffle, you will get an entry. Before I show some questions I wrote up, um, I'm going to show some prizes. The runner-up prize is a product that I've been enjoying for the better part of a year and a half now, and that is the wonderful Uberlite Flex. If you don't know what this is, it is a the best record lamp ever made, and you can see it over here. Um, it has multiple light settings, multiple brightness settings, and it flexes and bends any which way you want. It really is kind of the, the last record light you're ever gonna need. So um, if you want a turntable light, um, I'm giving one away, the Uberlite Flex. So this is the runner-up prize. And then the grand prize is some records. I'm giving away a pack of five records. I wanted the records I included in this prize to kind of encompass uh, my various musical tastes. And I think I've accomplished that. So let me show you what is on offer here for the grand prize. We have a uh, sealed copy of Analog Productions Living Stereo reissue of the Reiner Sound. This is one of my all time favorite classical records. Um, there's some, there's three really great pieces of, of romantic repertoire on here. Ravel's Rhapsody Espanol, a Spanish style symphonic poem. Uh, his Pavan for a Dead Princess, which is one of the most gut-wrenchingly beautiful melodies ever put to music. And of course, on the other side, you have uh, Sergei Rachmaninoff's Isle of the Dead tone poem, which is, you know, I love Rachmaninoff, it's just thrilling. And the sound is gorgeous. Chad in Analog Productions did a great job with this. Next up, we have a metal record. This is, um, these are actually some, some friends of mine in Austin. They have a band called Glassing. It's one of the best heavy bands out there right now. This is their latest album, Twin Dream. This is a new repress of the album that was just released via Brutal Panda, Brutal Panda Records. And I believe it might already be sold out. Um, it's done a very limited run. It's not sealed because it didn't ship that way, but it is a brand new record. So Glassing, Twin Dream. Included, you know, I'm a big Chet Baker fan, so I included one of the new Kraft Chet Baker reissues. This is Chet Baker live in New York. A modern rock record, a sealed copy of Circa Survives The Amulet. I think this came out in, I want to say 2017 or 2018. I remember going to the record release tour of this album, and this is definitely one of the band's best later albums, I think. And then finally, um, you know, had to include some Japanese city pop in here. We have um, the We Want Sounds reissue of Akiko Yano's, uh, let me make sure I pronounce this right, Iroha ni Kompeto. I think I pronounced that right. This is um, one of her late 70s albums, one of the last really like funky, jazzy albums she did before she went to a more avant-garde direction. This is just such a fun record. Um, I think almost anyone will enjoy the music on this. 
So if you want to win either the Uber Light Flex or those records, here's what you gotta do. You gotta make a video and answer these six questions I have for you. So the first question is show a classical record. And if you don't have a classical record, show something with some type of orchestral arrangement. So I'll show some companion records for these questions. Um, you know, I was just listening to this. This is a wonderful Speaker's Corner reissue of the Schubert Trout uh, Quintet. This is with members of the Vienna Octet and uh, Clifford Curzon, who was a great Decca recording pianist um, back in the 50s and the 60s. You know, I like Speaker's Corner Decca reissues, but this is one of the best ones I've, I've heard in a while. I really enjoyed listening to this. So if you can, I don't think this is in print anymore, but if you can track this down, this is a really impressive reissue. Let's say you're not a big classical collector. Um, you could show something like this, which is Metallica with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra. Uh, you know, this is kind of, this was kind of a landmark record when it came out. I, I love stuff like this where like heavy rock bands play with orchestras. I think it really, it's a fun experience. Question two, show the heaviest sounding album you own. Um, and you can go a lot of directions with this. Like one, one that I think of is um, this record by this Japanese like experimental power violence band called Endon. Um, this is Through the Mirror. This came out in uh, 2017. I saw this band in like 2018 here in Phoenix open for um, the uh, sludge metal band Boris and they played this opening set that was just like one of the most crushing, loud, intense, um, heavy sets I've ever seen. They, they, have, they had a, um, I don't know if this band is still active because they did, they did have a death um, recently in the band, but um, they had this, this crazy um, electronic noise manipulation member of the band who would like uh, make his own instruments and run them through various electronics. Um, it was really cool to watch and the, the things that came out of the speakers I don't know if I've ever heard before. But let's say you know you don't like any hard rock or heavy metal or anything like that. Well you could show something like this. This is Shostakovich Symphony Number no. 5. Um, if I had a copy of 8 lying around here uh, I would have showed that because that's I think the most crushing Shostakovich Symphony but 5 is pretty powerful too. I mean I think if anything if anything orchestral gets to be called heavy metal, it's, uh, or, or heavy, it's Shostakovich. So question three, show an artist or group you got into primarily because of vinyl slash record collecting. So maybe something you wouldn't have gone off and listened to um, had you not been in like the record collecting hobby. For me, that's an easy one. That's Steely Dan. This is a group that you know, I had, I had listened to small snippets of over the years and they never really did anything for me, but you know, this was on like online streaming services or like MP3 or YouTube or things like that. And once I got one of their records, I got it. I understood why this band is so good. And it's not just the sound quality, it's just like hearing everything that's going on and how interesting and intricate the arrangements are that I never would have experienced without, you know, vinyl or being into audio or things like that. So. I credit my record collecting with my love of Steely Dan. Question four, show a foreign and or non-English record, bonus points for an import pressing. Well, you know me, I love foreign music, especially the music of Japan. Uh, I will show here. This is um, the album Taboo by the band Buck Tick. This is the last, um, last album of theirs that was released on vinyl. I think this is from 1989. And what's cool about this is it's a single LP album um, but they released it as a two LP set with a bonus picture disc that has no music on it. It's just a picture disc with the band and their crazy hair on it. Um, and then the actual black vinyl record that has the music on it. And it's a really good sounding album. I'm, I'm glad I picked it up and it's very difficult to find. Definitely a gem in my collection. All right, I also pulled out this. This is uh, Harmonium Le Heptad. Um, one of the greatest prog rock albums ever made, but Canadian band, Canadian pressing, and they are Quebecois, so not in English. So you pull out something like this. Don't copy me though. Question number five. Show a CD, tape, digital download, whatever, of an album that needs to be pressed on vinyl. That's just, it's never gotten the vinyl treatment and you've been waiting and you're waiting years and years and it's just never happened. Um, you know, there's so many great albums that were around when I was, you know, growing up that, you know, were released during an era where it was just CDs only and you know the bands aren't around anymore or the catalog has fallen you know fallen through the cracks somehow and it's just never been released on vinyl. Um, I can think of a couple albums but you know the, the two that I really um, really would love to see on vinyl is uh, Horse the Band's album A Natural Death. I love Horse the Band to this day but especially when I was younger I was obsessed with this band. 
um, a hardcore band with some 8-bit Nintendo sounds and a really talented keyboard player that would play analog synthesizers. The, this, these records, all their entire discography, is sorely in need of a vinyl reissue program. Another album that uh, is near and dear to my heart is Duran Gray's uh, 2004 album, Withering to Death. I remember buying this when I was like 12 or 13. It was the first Duran Gray album. This is my same copy I had. I bought when I was like 12 or 13. I bought it like a um, like a, like a bookstore, like like Barnes and Noble or Schuler's Books, um, something like that. And this is the same copy I have that I bought back then. And um, yeah, this has never been pressed on vinyl, and I don't know why. Um, more Darren Gray albums need to be on vinyl, but particularly this one, because this is, this is kind of the album that got me into the band, and one of the ones I go back to the most. All right, question five. This is the last question. This is an interesting one, so you get to be a little creative with this. Um, show, me, show, me your, uh, show me your editorializing. So this, this question is called Letter to the Editor. Pick one of my musical or gear takes to editorialize on. So imagine I just published an article in some magazine and you get to write a letter to the editor in response. Take an artist I like or a record I showed that you checked out and you either loved or hated. Uh, give me your take. Or um, you know, if you have a record that maybe I showed that you went out and bought and you said, oh, that sounds interesting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a listen or you streamed it and you went, oh, I really enjoy this. I'm glad, I, I'm glad uh, Michael showed this to me or I can't believe this idiot thinks this is good. This is the biggest pile of trash I've ever heard. Tell me about that, but be specific. Don't, don't, just, don't, just, uh, don't just cheat. Um, or we could do the same thing with gear. You know, if, if there's a piece of gear that I really liked or I've talked about that you know just doesn't doesn't do it for you, doesn't match what you're looking for in sound, or you had a bad experience with, or if there's something that I talked about that you went and listened to that you really enjoyed, like a turntable or an amplifier or a pair of speakers, talk about that. Write me a letter to the editor. Uh, everyone gets an opinion. Just you know, be cordial, be cool. But I thought that question would be a little, uh, you know, something a little off the beaten track, something you just can't just pull out a record for. So you have to actually tell me what you think. So that's six questions for you guys. Hopefully, um, nothing too extraneous or difficult because I want as many people as possible to be able to make a video for this. So remember, um, tag me in the video title with the at sign. Get your videos uploaded by uh, October seventh. Um, one month from now, uh, and then I will enter you into a raffle to win these prizes. So thank you all so much for the support. Here's to the next 10,000 subscribers. Um, I appreciate you all. Uh, good luck in the contest and cheers.